Today we're looking at the XPS 13 in stereo because Dell did something interesting. They decided they wanted to take the XPS 13 and put it on steroids. It's their best-selling premium laptop and it is Windows most recommended laptop in the number one position. You go on Google any chart that says best Windows laptop, XPS 13 is typically at the top. So here's what Dell did. They said, okay, Mr. Intel, you've got some new chips coming out. So we're gonna take the U series chip, the Ultrabook chip, and we're gonna go put it in the 9315, our low level Ultrabook, entry level 13 inch laptop that looks like a 12 inch because the bezels are so small. And we're gonna take your P series performance chip and we're gonna put it in a new XPS 13 that we're gonna call Plus. It's not a H series chip, which is the top dog. And that's what you get in the 15 and 17. So please keep that in mind. This is not a shrunken down XPS 15, but it is a better XPS 13. And then they've done some other things. They've taken these machines and given them the, essentially the same chassis, although the Plus is a little bit thicker, I'm guessing to cope with the different chip. The screen's also a little bit thicker, and again, I'm guessing that this is the touch and this is the non-touch, and that's something to do with it. They took the computer and they said, okay, we're gonna bifurcate this even more. When you spec out the lower N9315, we're only gonna give you some base options. Right now, high def only on the screen. You want an OLED screen or a 4K screen, you have to go to the plus. You can see already, this is geared to be the performance small machine. Higher performance chip, higher quality screens, lower performance chip, lower quality screens. There is a clear delineation point. And I say this to make sure you understand it because at first glance, I didn't. I just thought that the 13 plus was the futuristic next gen model of the 13 and it would ultimately replace this one day and this would just be what you get. But I don't think that's what's happening at all. I think this is the low end, low price point and this is now the higher end, higher price point for this size and class of device. And so with that all said, let's talk about them. If you want to understand the details of the devices on their own, I've already dropped a review of the 9315 and this week we will be dropping a standalone review of the 9320. So I don't want to rehash everything that I've already talked about, but I do want to talk about some differences and some nuances that are going to make a meaningful impact to the way you use your device. There is no better place to start than the crazy looking keyboard. Have you seen this keyboard? Check it out. This is futuristic and space age. I love how it looks. I love the edge to edge keys. It goes with the edge to edge display. I love the colorful little buttons across the top now that are capacitive and I can just touch them and they light up. It's funny, Apple's getting rid of the touch bar and gone back to keys. Dell is getting rid of the F keys going to touch sensitive buttons. I also love the trackpad. I don't think it's much bigger than the one on the 9315 and I don't like the one on the 9315 because I look down at it and it's so small and so shallow and I like big trackpads and I cannot lie, okay? On the Plus, I don't see that, so it doesn't cause me the same emotional anxiety when I look down at it, and it works surprisingly well. Also, they sound completely different when you are clicking on them. I'm gonna try and help you with this. Let's see if it can pick it up. I'm guessing if the mic even picked that up at all, you could hear the clicks on this, and you couldn't hear the clicks on this. It's very different. And why does that matter? Well, if you work in a quiet place and those places do exist, you may be in the office. A crazy idea I know now that we all work from home, but some of us don't, we have to go into the office. When you are there and everybody's working, sometimes all you hear is the tap, tap, tap of trackpads and the click, click, click of keys. You will have less tapping and less clicking with the 9320 or the XPS Plus. Now. It is gonna take a little bit of learning, okay? I'm just being honest with you. Your muscle memory's kinda there, but the keys are bigger, and they go right to the edge, and occasionally, you're gonna catch the edge of the wrong key. I'm guessing, if this was the only keyboard that I used, in about two to three days of heavy usage, my muscle memory would adapt, and by the end of the week, I'd be in good shape. The problem I'm gonna have is, if it is the main keyboard that I use, 
when I dock and I use an external keyboard or when I go between devices because I have a few of them, you know, I'm a tech reviewer after all, like we get to play with this kind of stuff. That's where I'm gonna have an issue with muscle memory, the slightly different layout of the keyboard. Another interesting thing about the keyboard is, as you look here again, I'm gonna just flash this up for you. You notice there is a backspace key in the top right corner, but no delete key. They've done an Apple because regular keyboards have, let me check, I'm not lying to you. Typically, a yes, I'm right. <laughs> the backspace key is there. Backspace key and delete, no delete. Just the new ones, just pointing it out for you. Everything else is pretty much where you would expect. You know, page up, page down is right there. All your other kind of fun stuff. Port-wise are the same. Two USB-Cs, two USB-Cs. So you're not giving up anything. Same kind of cooling out the back, no grills underneath. You can see all this in the shots that we're putting up here for you. And I'm putting a few more shots up for you. Thank you to everybody that's pointed that out. We try and find the balance here and get it right. Apparently you all don't like looking at my face so much and you want to look at the gear more. It's okay. My feelings weren't hurt. Enjoy the plethora of B-roll footage today. And in fact, because you have asked so much, I'm going to go ahead and just throw up a B-roll video and nothing else. So watch for that later in the week. It will be nothing but the glory of these devices and their unboxing in a video of about three to four minutes for your viewing pleasure because Dell didn't do a great job of getting us excited about it. And apparently I'm one of the first guys on YouTube to have this. So I wanna help you out and I'm gonna give you some love because that's what we do here at Mike Drops Tech. So let's talk about specs. I don't like to get technical, okay? We are not the uber techs of YouTube, but every now and again, I feel the need that I have to. And today is one of those days. I talked about these processors a little bit. This is the U series range of chips, the ultra low power. This is the P series. It's performance, but not crazy performance. What does that mean? These are gonna run about nine watts to about 12, 13 watts in the 9315. That's how much power they're drawing. P series is gonna draw about 28 watts. So already you can see a massive difference. And then as if that wasn't bad enough, I went ahead and put a 4K screen on it. So that's drawing even more power. And we're gonna to get to battery in a minute, so stick with me. What that means in practical terms is this. The 9315 is gonna have two performance cores and eight efficiency cores. The 9320 is gonna have four performance cores and eight efficiency cores. Now, I don't know what they were doing with the efficiency cores because they're not that efficient compared to the last gen. So I don't know if it's like a marketing gimmick, somebody really thinks they are efficient or they just had too much tequila when they were riding the spec sheets on the new chips. But trust me, there is not that much of a distinction between efficiency cores and performance cores. And I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. So stay with me. 12 threads, 16 threads. Everything about these machines is performance, not performance, okay? Keep that in mind. Wi-Fi 6C on both of them, so you're not sacrificing anything there. No headphone jack, they removed it on both. I think it was a mistake, but they did. Because of the way that they now cool the machine, the grill underneath is gone, so it's not gonna blow heat down onto your legs quite so badly. But again, let me tell you this, and I, and I mentioned this in both of my standalone reviews. Don't be fooled by thinking these are gonna be cool. They are not cool devices. You push them, you are gonna get some heat on your legs if you use this on a lap, and I do, and so I took that pain for you. I can't say I had the heat for too long because I'm a wimp, and so I moved it pretty quickly, but it does get warmer than warm. Not so hot I could boil an egg on it, but warmer than warm nonetheless. The 9315 has got two speakers that shoot out audio at the side kind of grills, it's kind of down kind of side. The 9320 has what they're calling dual four speakers. In normal audio, they sound about the same. That's 50% volume on both of them. I think the 9320 sounded a little bit fuller. I wouldn't say there was a lot of bass there, but I think it sounded a little bit better. Let's try something else. It's almost like the 9315 is a little bit louder than the 20, but the 20 has like a little bit more clarity. I wish I could play some awesome music, but you know, the whole copyright thing and all that. I 
I mean, it's definitely different, right? It's kind of strange, it's hard to explain. It definitely sounds a little clearer. Like this sounds a little bit muddier on the 9315. That's maybe the best way to describe it. Touch louder, touch muddier. Little bit clearer, little bit, little bit less loud on the 9320. Neither of them are killer speakers, but for a laptop this size, I think they're gonna do the job and they're gonna get you where you wanna be. So, you know, don't give them too hard of a time. And obviously the colors are different. You get the sky blue and the chocolate brown on the 9315. You get kind of the staple colors here on the 9320 with this good looking silver. I think the thing that we're all wondering about is let's talk battery life. When I think about the comparison here, what I've done is basically given you the lowest spec you could buy comfortably, 16 gig, 512 i5 FHD screen, and arguably one of the better specs that you could buy, 4K screen, i7 P series processor. So this is the variance, in my opinion, that we're gonna see on battery life. And obviously I haven't had these in the studio that long. I haven't been able to do full start to finish battery tests on both devices, but I wanted to give you something to work with because I know everybody's asking me about this both here on YouTube and in forums and other places. I ran some tests and we played some video and we left it playing to see what it would do. And so in this very unscientific YouTube video playing test that I left them going for a little part of the day, here's what I have discovered. In one hour and five minutes of video playback, the 9315 used about 14% of its battery at a 100% screen brightness. Okay, I maxed them out because I wanted to see just how bad it could be, 14%. The 9320 used 22%, so just over 50% more. When I've done short tests or bursts, I've seen anything from 50 to about 75% more battery usage on the 9320 versus the 9315. And so in the real world, if you were running on a 100% screen brightness doing low level stuff, web browsing, YouTube watching, all that kind of thing. We're not talking Adobe Premiere here, people. So don't be hating on me in the comments, okay? I haven't done a test like that. In that normal light level usage, that gives me an estimated battery life of about five hours on the 9320 and about seven to eight hours on the 9315. Now, this is the standard balanced power saving. I haven't modified anything. Are you gonna have your screen at 100% brightness? I don't know. Maybe if you like your screens to burn your retinas and your eyeballs, like I do, maybe you turn it down a little bit. So you might get slightly better, but you are absolutely not gonna get eight to 10 hours on normal light usage on a 9320. But here's the flip side before everybody hates on Windows and says, go buy a MacBook Air M1 or M2. The difference is when you put a little bit of load, not crazy load, a little bit of load, I think what you're gonna find is the performance gain and improvement over an M1 chip, and I don't know about the M2 because I haven't played with it yet, but the improvement over an M1 chip versus an M1 under load where you don't benefit with that crazy battery life and that battery comes way, way down. I have seen five to six hours out of an M1 chip on a MacBook when it's being pushed, okay? So all of a sudden that great big, you know, I can get 12, 13 hours out of my battery and you're only getting five or six out of your windows. No, it, that's not the whole story here. It's gonna be much closer. And I think that's the key right now as you may be trying to figure out, am I Windows, am I Apple? Apple's got a real strong point with that battery. We're gonna talk more about that in my comparison with the MacBook Air, but I think Windows and Intel are getting a lot of things right. There's definitely some areas for improvement here from Dell. I think we need more clarity in how these are positioned and who they're positioned for. I think most people would be better served buying an XPS Plus, even if it's a lower spec, than a 9315. I think this is the future of the XPS range. I think the keyboard is much nicer. You're gonna get used to it and you're gonna really like it. It's nice to play with. I like that I can get the better screen options than I can on the regular 9315. And I think in a couple of years when this is discontinued and this is now how they all look, if you're still holding that laptop, you're not gonna feel like you made the wrong decision. So here as you're looking at these two screens, look, you see this blue tone all the way over this image and you see how much whiter this area is here compared to the 9315. Obviously full high def and then this is the 4K ultra high def, but there is a little bit more going on here than just resolution. So keep that in mind if you're debating spending the $200. 
Are you gonna care? I don't know. If you're doing documents, you're browsing the web, no, I don't think you really will care. It's a good looking screen, it really is. If you are doing photo work, graphical work, video work, anything like that, you are gonna care and you're gonna wanna upgrade and pay the $200, but that's where the problem comes in because you can't get the 4K ultra high def or the three and a half K OLED in the 9315. Dell has not got either of those options available. And I think they planned on doing it. And my guess is when things settle down and there's not shortages like there are now, you will be able to get those screens because they exist in, in the documentation. But right now today, if I wanna order a 9315 and I check this morning, it is FHD only, period. While we're looking at the screens, let's take a look at performance here in a real world, very simple benchmark loading a web page. I know, we go so high tech here at Mic Drops Tech, you wouldn't believe it. We're gonna literally load a web page in a browser and this is gonna be our unofficial speed test right now for these two machines. But you know what, we all live in browsers and we load web pages very, very often. So I feel as if I'm doing you justice by letting you see this test. So let's check it out. Here we go, are we ready? Three, two, one. Identical. I mean, literally identical. Okay, don't read anything into this. It's just the top of the list, okay? I know it's Fox News, but it's just the top of the list. Okay, a little bit quick on the 9320, but negligible, negligible difference. While we're doing this comparison, I should probably bring out my MacBook Air just so you can see the difference. You see that pop up? Doesn't happen on Edge, because Edge filters that stuff. It's such a nicer browsing experience because it stops all that noise. And now look, massive ad, no ad. It's the browser itself that's doing that. It's a really clever feature by Edge. So yeah, just a little tip here, folks. Edge is obviously the preferred browser on a Windows 11 machine. It's, it is the most battery efficient. And I think it gets overlooked way too easily because look at this feature here and I'm not talking Windows 11 today so just stay with me for a second. Edge is filtering out a bunch of noise that I don't want to see. I've already had a pop-up in Safari now I've got a massive ad in Safari and you can see here how it's affecting the amount of information I can look at the screen before I even touch or do anything and it's it's features like that that show Microsoft is really thinking about the end user experience and it's, it's denoising the web for you when you're not getting all these constant pop-ups and jingles and whatever else is, Safari's not doing that same thing. So just a little nugget, free bit of information here from Uncle Mikey, because I care. But let's look at these two and let's go ahead and do a little loading of a web page. I'm gonna scroll down here, just in case some preloading has happened. And I don't know why I've got no thumbnails in Safari, but I guess they're gonna appear eventually there. That's a bit strange. So we're gonna click on both these and let's just have a look how they load up this page. Wow. Did you see that? You see, they all do pre-caching. And so they look at the links at the top of the page and start preloading and that kind of stuff in the background. But that's why I scrolled halfway down the page. That was a significant difference. And I'm not gonna say every page is gonna be like that. It's just a simple one-off test. But it goes to show you for all the love that Apple get, Microsoft have made some great headwind here with Edge, with Windows 11, and Intel have made some great performance gains as well with the P chips. But we're not comparing the MacBook Air right now. So let's close that one down. Sorry? Once again, massive ad, no ad. I get the information. I can see the top of this playing. Point proved. Thank you, Apple. So look, we're talking screens here for a second. And let me show you a little bit of the difference between this anti-reflective, non-glare, and all these other kind of cool phrases that Dell's got going on. This is the high def, the standard high def. This is the anti-reflective screen, if I remember this correctly. And so you can see here, look, as I've got my key light bouncing on it, you see the light, but there's not really that, that kind of shine to it. This is the, the 4K ultra high def screen, but you see, you see that difference? You see the key light in there? That's just to kind of give you that, that helpful understanding to show you between those two. If you're working in a very high light environment, lots of sunshine behind you, lots of bright lights above you, 
You are gonna struggle a little bit more with the 4K screen and the way that that glare is. Of course, this is touch and everything else and this one isn't, so, you know, you make your choices, you live with them. It's up to you, but I wanted to let you see it because I know it's important to a lot of you folks. Check out the 9315 review, it's already up. Watch out for the 9320 review, it's coming up. And then watch out for a couple other interesting comparisons, MacBook Air, Surface Laptop Go. We're having a whole lot of fun this week in the studio with these devices to try and bring you as much value as possible so that you can make the best decisions you can. Wait, 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 don't go right now. This is the bit that I need your help with. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you see my videos when they come out. Look, I work really hard on these. When you subscribe, you help the channel grow and you'll be awesome. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And now you really can go till next time. It's gonna be amazing.